talking about building the PlayStation 4. How did you go from software developer to all of a sudden having to have your hand in creating this console? Well, I mean, on PlayStation 3, I'd, I'd actually been involved a, a bit with the hardware. I was embedded with the hardware team for a couple of years. The idea there wasn't that I'd really work on the hardware as much as I'd be getting the information about what it was like and bringing it back to the game developers in the States like Naughty Dog or Insomniac or the like. But when we were starting to head into PlayStation 4, and it just seemed like we could do a bit better, that we could make our hardware more accessible to the game developers. I mean, after all, they're the ones who are creating the games. That's good. How did you first get involved with the, the fact that you were going to be having a, a hand in the creating the architecture for this console? Well, um, actually, I ended up putting my own name forward, which was rather odd, of course. course. It was good timing. Senior management was really thinking it would be good to have the game guys much more involved in the development of the hardware. PlayStation 3, because the architecture was powerful, but it was also difficult to use, they were feeling that that whole direction was a bit of a consequence of not having the feedback from the game creators. And so, yeah, amazingly, they said, yes, go ahead. And so from January of 2008, I was lead system architect on PlayStation 4. How do you go in with that knowledge of how do I make this console better for developers and easier for developers to get in and make games for? Well, I mean, one thing, and it's rather obvious in retrospect, is we went out and we talked to about 30 different game teams about what sort of hardware they like to see. And, and believe it or not, I, I don't think it had ever been done in the creation of consoles. Consoles were designed by hardware engineers thinking about what the future of technology might be like. And I, I wanted to be much more focused on simply what the game development community would like in the next generation console. Things like unified memory or a, or a hard drive in every box. I understand you made a bigger controller so people yes. can understand. Tell yes. me a little bit about the process of that. So I mean, we were just trying to figure out, because we wanted a whole range of players from the nostalgia core players who like Crash back in the day, who are obviously adults now, to kids today. We want to make sure those kids could play the game properly. And so we were getting children of our staff to come in and hold the controller and show us how far their hands could reach and what was comfortable for them. And we realized that we could experience this directly ourselves if we made a giant controller. And so we used a 3D printer to make a 1.5 times sized DualShock 3. With console launch, I mean, everybody's excited about how much more powerful the system is going to be. And with the games that we've seen, it's toward the end of the life cycle for the PlayStation 3. How do you see it getting even better than that? So I, mean, I think we're going to see an ongoing evolution. Right now, we have this great mix of big titles like Grand Theft Auto V and smaller indie titles. And if you go forward, we're going to have out at launch on the one side Assassin's Creed Black Flag and on the other side Octodad. I mean, it's, it's a lot of fun. And you also have Knack coming out as a launch title. I think there's definitely going to be a nice mix for everyone come PlayStation 4 launch time. Mark, thank you so much. Thank you.